A panel of medical experts are urging the FDA to approve a new way of treating opioid addicts using a slender rod implanted into the arm that delivers medicine for months at a time. Now, some doctors are saying that this could ease the national epidemic of drug overdoses. Now, the implant is about the size of a matchstick and delivers the drug buprenorphine mm -hmm. directly into a patient's system. Now, buprenorphine is normally taken orally, and it's left to the patient to regulate how they take that medicine. The problem is that it's addictive in and of itself. So left to their own devices, people are abusing this medicine, and the implant allows people to regulate uh, their intake for over a six-month period. I think it's, it's, in a way, it's very positive that they are trying to push this uh, slow-release mechanism. Something similar happened with methadone when they brought it in as an alternative for those who were addicted to heroin that has evolved into different drugs. This is another instance. But for me, it, it's another step in the wrong direction because we keep basing the pain management uh, strategy based on opioid painkillers. And that's what created the epidemic that you referred to in this country, where we see uh, not only the problem of its, in itself about addiction, but we've seen also uh, HIV epidemics in Indiana because of the sharing of the needles and the fact that the government has been taking a long time, the state government, to adopt the needle exchange program, the abuse of Vicodin, Percocet, all of these different brand names of opioid-based painkillers that are really easily available to really young people, and then they find themselves trying to get a $5 hit in the corner, and they die of overdoses. Now they keep trying to make you believe that if they give you a, a little stick that is going to release the drug for six months at a time, then you're better off than just taking it in pills or trying to, to score it at the street. I think the problem in itself is relying on, on opioids to the, for the painkilling management. Well, the question is how do we get to a place where we can fully get people off of opiate-based uh, prescriptions and things like Stop that? Stop giving them uh, so, so easily. Because if you see now the standard practice of any physician is to just give you a, a, a prescription for these drugs and you can go to the store and after three months of using them, most of the people are hooked on. And then they don't have access to the pill and they have to go to the black market, opening up uh, the door to many of these uh, implications of the, of the epidemic. Well, prescription drug use is on the rise. It's been in a steady, steady increase since, you know, over the last few decades. Yeah. And to your point, there have been a lot of cases where people have been addicted for, to prescription pills. They haven't been able to get them. And then they go and they start taking heroin mm -hmm. as a way to ease the transition because it is cheaper. It is easily accessible. But the number of heroin deaths, and we have a chart that we can go full screen on, the number of heroin deaths in the United States has pretty much quadrupled um, in the last year. So it's it's taking the country by storm. And exactly. It's and I think that um, there's another social implication that many law enforcement officials have actually uh, shown, you know, lied on, that is the fact that the demographics that are getting uh, addicted to heroin are different from the ones that we used to believe back in the 80s and the 90s when the first heroin epidemics happened. We are seeing middle class white males and women that are getting addicted because of the social acceptance of popping a pill. It will be okay if I take two pills and I drink a glass of wine and my pain will go away, but that escalates really quickly. And now we find uh, in the arrests numbers and in the, in the files, a different type of demographic getting into the black market market of heroin, a proof that it's a public health issue. It's a problem that is coming from the health system and not from uh, the wrong choices that you will make based off all of this stigma of social choices that drugs have. Well, I think this implant also will help change the narrative around this conversation. In his State of the Union address last night, President Barack Obama made mention of the mm -hmm. fact that prescription drugs, heroin addiction, is really ha having a stronghold on the nation. Correct. And with this implant, I hear you and I hear your concerns. However, I think this is a step sort of in a right direction because it, it is allowing lives to be saved in a way where we are controlling how people are, are consuming these, these medicines. I agree. Because... I, I, I don't expect for people literally to go cold turkey right. on heroin or their addictions, and, that, and that's kind of short-sighted. But at the same time, we are in a situation of crisis, and then you have to win off easily from these addictions. And this definitely, uh, I agree with you that this is the first step, and it will help, and it will be uh, a way to prevent new addictions. And having this as, the, as the, a different way to prescribe this medicine and a different way to help addicts recover, but at the same time, 
at the end for me is big pharma that is behind trying to sell the cure and also selling the the root of the problem so for for me yes it's a it's a good step to help those who are already in the problem but continue the distribution of these uh, opioid based chemicals to the population and i think that's the mistake well, the FDA heard this, and in a 12 to 5 vote, uh, they agreed that they would take this new implant into consideration. Is this just another case of big pharma pushing drugs and providing solutions? Guess we'll find out soon.